I would say welcome to my Arc Linux system, but sure, it is an Arc Linux system, but take a look where we are. We are basically on a Windows 10 version, and we have VirtualBox installed, and it's version 6.0.4. Here you can see it, so it's from this date, 30th of January, and it's all installed already, and we have the video to show you that later on. And you can go always to full screen mode, so there's this, this button up here. And sometimes, yep, we have to wait a little bit, and then it kicks in, and he knows I have 1020 on 1080. The video that we're going to make now is continuation, because sometimes it's interesting to do updates like this guy is asking me to do, and maybe there are things we need to figure out and to teach. That's always the point. We like to teach. So 1901.4 January is almost February. So basically the next release will come up. Come so 1902.4 basically or five or six, whatever we end up, but 1902. Updating two things. There's the update command, which is an alias. Just type the word alias in the terminal and you'll see what it does. It wants us to replace something that this particular program with that pro particular pro program, mostly don't think about it, just say yes. That's always gonna be, well, your proper and your correct answer. So a lot of these things will be installed. I don't, I understand that you don't know what all these things are, but in time, in years to come, you'll start to recognize the applications and start to see also what are the important ones. And one, let's just take one that's important, that's this guy. Linux 4.20.5, that's the kernel, that's linux.org, serve to it. That's what is driving Linux, really, that's the kernel. So that's a very important one. And maybe there's a system D in here as well, system D, a new version to 40.34-3. And of course, there are other things that are important, but these two guys, I always try to point them out if I see them, because it means for me, I'll have to reboot afterwards. So he wants to install a new kernel, which is going to fix some stuff. It's which gonna make more uh, compatibility stuff for hardware. So new hardware will be recognized and bugs will be out and things like that. So a new kernel is most of the time good news but i do know that uh, from the form that people have uh, different hardware right so lots of computers out there with different hardware and what you need to do sometimes is not choose for the linux kernel but the linux dash lts kernel so that's possible too that's also explained on articlelinux.com lots of articles because there are lots actually i think more five or six kernels out there that you can try out but those two are the most important one, Linux and Linux-LTS, long-term support, LTS. So we're going to update all these things. And the more you read these things, don't walk away. Read it, read it. And at some point in time, you say, oh, yeah, that's Inkscape. I know that program, that application, fine. Okay, modem, network, things have changed. Network manager has changed, fine. Tonar, ah, that's the file manager, right? File manager, Vim editor, yes, VLC, all oh, yes, for the videos, and more and more and more. You'll recognize all these um, things. And just so passing this guy, this guy has just received a major update, Compton 4 to Compton 5. So we've had some um, upgrading to do. So we made new Compton.conf because of it. And that's life. Everything is changes. Everything is in motion. And uh, if you can't well, live with that, that's that sucks. But it's life, right? Everything is always in motion and is always changing. And we have to change with it. As simple as that. All right. So I can keep talking, but let's wait for the pause. I'll wait for uh, the update and pause. Then we get this nasty little message. Plugin whisker menu unexpectedly left the panel. Do you want to restart it? So this little menu that we have here is called the whisker menu. 
and it has just been updated and it does not like to be updated. So the only thing you need to do is basically execute and you're done. And there it is again. So the menu is back. So that will happen every time you do an update for that particular plugin. I was there. Now there are two things I can do. Well, more things, of course, but one of them is, hey, you have a kernel, you have a system D, you need to reboot. That's one. But maybe let's do something first because, because uh, we don't, uh, we should not forget it. And as all these lines that we've put in here, the files have been installed in each syscal, the files have been installed in each syscal, the files have been installed in each syscal. It seems a lot of stuff on Article Linux has been installed in etc scale. Basically, all the information that's in there should actually be on your system. Files, etc, scale. The inside of this scale, people say sometimes, hey, Eric, it's just empty. There's nothing in etc scale. What are you saying? Edit, new view. Show hidden files or just remember to shortcut Control H. Then it seems there's a lot inside. So the idea is actually to check out what is in here and what do I have. This is where we update everything. We keep working on these files all the time. And when we make a new ISO, these files are on the ISO. But that's already two weeks or three weeks ago. So these files have all been changed already, updated, fixed, new gonkeys, uh, etc., new scripts. It's a lot of stuff. Now, if you want to follow everything up, what changed, which is, a, well, a longer tutorial, what do you do then? You want to actually know we had a January release. We are almost beginning February. What changed in two weeks, three weeks time? What you do is you actually make a backup scale. You can do that, backup scale, that's command. That's going to make a copy of what is here. But I should have done that before I updated. So at this point in time, everything in the scale is up to date. This is the February release already, the February information. So I've overwritten January already, and now we have the February release. So never mind. So now you know. Next time you update, you'll have a version from February and when updates come in you can compare it then. So we're too late basically. So backup scale let's quickly have a look. There are some commands so if you type alias you see a lot of stuff in here and interesting stuff. Lazy commands things that you otherwise are working like I don't know 30 seconds but every time 30 seconds so backup scale, what does it do? Copy paste everything from etc scale to a dot scale backup and a date behind it. Let's have a look. Yes, everything that was in scale is now in here. And the fun stuff is if you do another one, another backup scale in one month time, for instance, you have two of those. And you have two of those. That was not correct. Let's put that guy over here. If you have, let's say it's one month uh, more uh, in the future, right? You have two scales, one from date X and one from date I, Y. And what you need to do is compare and then everything is going to be clear. In this case, of course, it's no difference at all. But you say, for instance, just go show me the new ones and the modified ones, and then you can see what changed. That's why backup scale is interesting to just follow along if you are staying rolling what changed in etc scale all the time. Now, the thing, this is just to learn. This is just to see what changed, what changed. That's backup scale. But there is another command that we need now. That's scale. Scale says copy paste everything from etc scale to the home directory. And that's an interesting one. Because everything that we are going to burn on the February ISO is in etc scale. Now, either you say Control A, Control C, go to the home directory, Control V, 
every time and every time or you remember the command scale and that's why we sometimes we say just update and scale okay so scale is actually going to do that what i just showed and it's now you don't see it but it's all up to date now just saw a little bit movement in this in the icons here and that's the reason okay so the new stuff is now in from january from from february and is now on my system my personal system this is the time maybe to reboot okay we have now our article Linux stuff also in the home directory basically we have logout we have oh sorry reboot we have um restart okay so we did an update meaning arch linux stuff is up to date and arco linux stuff is up to date and this time this you will get at this point at this particular update so you only have to wait two minutes i'll talk two minutes um basically update is arch linux and arco linux so the arco linux stuff is coming from github and from our high speed data server those are the resources arch linux is coming from all different kind of servers all over the world they have different servers and we have a command which is called mirror mirrors mirror a and mirror d so we have four aliases to get the fastest arch linux servers so wherever you are in the world and you run those commands you can find them in the alias mirror mirror s mirror d and mirror a is going to look for you a what's the fastest server in your neighborhood is the system then up to date well yes and no there is another part which makes life interesting and makes our distro lively and fun to be around with and that's the aur arch user repository a lot of applications that we like and love come from arch user repository it's not arch linux people make package builds these packages applications icons themes cursors come from everywhere on the net they come from debian from red hat from zips from tar gz's from githubs anywhere and the package build is some kind of recipe that is going to tell that folder goes there that thing goes there that should be an executable that should be this and that and etc all the permissions are set right so everything just works and that's what the arch user repository maintainer that is or the guy that makes the package build he's going to maintain it and if a new release comes out he's going to update it and you'll get the updates in and that's how h and the aur works and how do we actually then update that thing let's take another wallpaper we do a pksyua that's also an alias so definitely read your aliases or remember at least the word alias because you can check and what says what it's so this update thing is going to pseudo pacman minus syyu you need to know that if you go to phase five arch linux installation update does not exist anymore you have pseudo pacman minus syyu or just one y anyway we are going to go for awr and that's this command and that command is up here yay minus s y uh, no confirm and then we're going to run that and see what it brings and maybe what difficulties it will entail because arch user repository is well interesting to have but sometimes packages break and that's not really the reason is not often not the maintainer so the guy that is going to write a particular package build is not going to is not the reason that it breaks but references um uh, the, so the downloads is wrong or the, the gpg is wrong or or and the five sum is wrong or anything that's changed and like i said nothing stays the same so all these documents and links and all the file sizes etc they all change all the time so you have to update these package builds and that's basically what you're waiting for an update from the package build so while that is going maybe 
we could go to have a look at the AOR. What is AOR? Arch. Bing, yeah. Great. So this is AOR. And um, for instance, you're interested in icons and you would like to see all things uh, about icons. And these are all the stuff you can have a look at. You can look at the votes. So that means with a package called AOR vote, you can actually vote for it. A lot of people voted for Arch Linux artwork, official logos, icons, etc. Popularity is important. Mint X icons, OB menu generator, we use that in Openbox, by the way. Papyrus icon theme, etc. etc. Lots of stuff. I've now well selected votes, meaning it goes from, from a, a large number to a smaller number or popularity the same, the ordering, I change the ordering, and then what's the most popular guy? The nerd fonts complete, elementary XFCE icons, etc. So when I started out with Arch Linux, I said, what's interesting, what's nice, what's fun? And then you go and have a look, and um, you want to have Spotify on this system, you go and have a look, oh yeah, Spotify is available, it's Spotify stable, or Telegram is Telegram. Does that is that uh, does that exist? Yes, it exists. Fine. Uh, what about WhatsApp? Does WhatsApp WhatsApp is that available? Yes, it's available. Franz is available. Rumbox is available. What's is available? All stuff that is happening on Windows and on Mac is also available on Arch, and that's the fun, right? And I was thinking about Discord also. Discord, is that available? Oh yeah, we have Discord here. And that's, by the way, the way how we talk to you guys. That's, you're always welcome to come on Discord. Let's include this in the video. Arc Linux, hello. Very important page, read all about it. This is Arc Linux in a nutshell. And all down here, we have this Discord link. This is the link you need. And of course, the application you install Discord. Okay, let's see if we have some issues, and there are issues. So there is one thing you need to do to make this thing work. And it says what you need to do. It says, fail to commit transaction conflicting files. This little file exists already in the file system, and I cannot upgrade it. What you do is say, okay, fine, fine, let's remove you, and then you can update everything. User, share, icons, new mix circle and then I can say done so sudo becoming administrator because this is a protected part of the system or m is remove and this particular file and that's the pathway with the file and that's it go back up arrow up and let him do the complete installation this time it will just skip it and we'll do it something comes to mind when I see all these things working, you should have the same thoughts as I have now. Am I using all my hardware? How many cores do I have? I have a cores, given four to Windows, given four to this Arco Linux or VirtualBox. Am I using four cores? No, you're not. So the point is, in Thunar, File Manager, Control H, go to bin, go to main, there is the script. Use all cores make package. We're making here packages, but let's tell the system, go and use all cores. I have four cores, that's correct. Given your password, and from now on, it's going to be much faster in updating these PKSY ways, so the AOR stuff is faster, not the update, but the, th the thing that's now happening here to the right, that's going to be faster because four cores are being used. And all the other things are interesting as well. So if you want to have Samba, which means actually I'm sharing my folder with others in my network. If I want to see other people's network, other computers in your network, those that's under 50 then. Some fun apps, if you want to have some fun apps like the pipes, etc. 
if you not don't know what I'm talking about, there is probably somewhere, I guess we're gonna have to go to articlelinks.com. The fun script, click on this link here, and these guys are all what we have in fun. See matrix, school retro term, lots of things like this coloring here, the code, figlet. Well, I let you take a look at it. So that's the fun script, it's here. And we have two of them. So version four means the last one. So this one can go by. There's a fix for uh, security wise for Intel and for AMD. And here is this LTS kernel. So we have, if you have trouble with this kernel, the latest kernel, which is 4.20.5, control T, 4.20.5. Then you install that guy. And that guy is the LTS kernel, long term support. There are other stuff like Pacman.2. Let's try it out just for fun. So, well, actually, I can just type it Pacman 2. That's Pacman. And then you use this slider here for the window so we can see it nicely. Fine. So, all kind of fun stuff this. Stay rolling is if you're going to never ever install, do a clean install. So you run this script and you run this script and you run that script. And in this case, you are going to the future in the sense that this is 1901, right? And the February release that's coming out in, let's say two weeks, will contain this thing. What is this thing? It will contain, or will not contain anymore. Let's take a look at the code. It will not contain anymore Pacman. And remove everything that's called transmission GTK, transmission CLL, and everything that's dependent on it, S. And this one says install Qubit Torrent. So we're switching our Torrent software. Let's say Qubit Torrent is nicer, faster. We like it more than we then transmission. So on the next ISO, no transmission anymore. And we have Qubit Torrent with a nice theme and all. So that's the change we've done and it's in there. So AUR is done, last check. If you run it again, if you type it correctly, correctly, then it should say everything done. What does this mean, mean maybe? Another question, out of date AUR packages. That's interesting to know, and I recommend you do that. If you know that an application is a higher number, that means it's out of date. So this guy is red. And why is this red? Because somebody made an account, log in, make an account, flag it out of date. This person, uh, which is called uh, maintainer, I think this one, this person will get a personal mail telling, hey, your package from manager has been flagged out of date. And he's kindly, kindly ask him to update the package build because this is all for free. Maintainers do this just for nothing, really, just for the fun, just to help the community out. That's Linux. So be um, respectful. That's all I ask, but flag it out of date. So he gets a message that he should do something and often Often, if there is an, if it cannot, cannot be fixed because of other issues, you'll probably see something here and the latest comments. So it also, first, take a look at the latest comments. And if you see, okay, no solution here, you see 2018.08. So then you flag it out of date. And hopefully, because it's all uh, volunteer work, hopefully you will fix it. So we'll have a font manager with the correct version. And it's coming from here, 073.1. I don't know where we can read it. Oh, yeah, 7.4. So somebody saw there is a new version, flag it out of date, and then maybe in a few weeks from now, a few days from now, we'll get a 7.4. That's how AOR works. It's not really Arch Linux, it's coming from everywhere, in this case, a GitHub. Okay. So if I want to stay rolling, this should be the last thing I should do. Stay rolling, right? 
transmission is out by transmission and welcome to qubit torrent and that's it basically so we have now a nice qubit torrent let's have a look qubit torrent i agree and there it is it's nicely tweaked this is the arc theme and it looks awesome and it works awesome also important basically i think i've an end and most of the time i forget to do it but now i have not forgotten to do it we could say we have here i'm pressing alt n to have a nice wallpaper what we could do if we end in style let's actually tell the system basically if you update 19.0.0.1.4 if you've done all the updates and you've done the rolling and you've done the scale and you've done AUR, basically you're up to date and you can have or you can say LSB release. Welcome. You have 1902.4. Next time you press Ctrl T, it will show you have 1902.4. That's it. All right, so don't forget, this was still a tutorial about Linux and about Windows. This is a Windows computer and VirtualBox 6.0 just works on it and everything is fine. Control F is going to maximize it. Wait for it, wait for it. There you have it. Now 1920 on 1080 and everything just works. All right, last message. Don't stay in VirtualBox, put it on the machine. Put it on SSD, put it on the hard disk, but put it on real metal because that's when you should actually, that's how you should actually enjoy any operating system at all. All right, cheers.